On today's episode, Rolls-Royce builds the world's biggest jet engine, additive replaces forging for major aircraft parts, and new life for space shuttle main engines. Today's episode is brought to you by Engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.tv today. The legendary British gas turbine manufacturer Rolls-Royce will have officially started construction of the world's largest jet engine called Ultrafan. Assemblies in the company's demo works facility in Derby in the UK with a demonstrator engine with a fan diameter of 140 inches. This engine is expected to be completed by the end of the year. The big engine will be the basis for a new family of ultrafan jets designed to power narrow-body and wide-body aircraft with 25% better fuel efficiency compared to the company's familiar Trent engine series. Rolls-Royce believes that higher efficiency will especially be important as airlines are expected to shift to more expensive biofuels in the future. The company's first test run of the engine will use sustainable fuel. The engine is built with multiple advanced technologies. Each fan blade has been developed with a digital twin which stores test data for the physical blade, allowing engineers to model in-service performance. The company can monitor more than 10,000 parameters at data rates of up to 200,000 samples per second. Fan blades are carbon titanium and a composite engine casing reduces weight by up to 1,500 pounds per aircraft. Ceramic matrix composites are also used in the engine hot section and the very high bypass ratio design is spun through reduction gearing from the main spool, a technology that is rapidly becoming standard in large diameter turbofans. A 25% fuel efficiency improvement sets a very high bar in an industry where thousands of engineering hours are invested to find 1 or 2% of additional fuel efficiency. Burning biofuels, it could keep commercial aviation affordable in the post-fossil fuel era. Over three decades, NASA launched 135 shuttle missions using Aerojet Rocketdyne RS-25 rocket engines, three mounted on every shuttle. The engines were state-of-the-art when conceived in the 1970s, and they proved to be very reliable, and when the shuttle program ended in 2011, 16 of the power plants were left over and placed in storage. With NASA's new space launch system, the RS-25 was a natural choice for the four main engines that power the liquid-fueled first stage. They have proven reliability, they're a mature technology, and of course, they're available. In the SLS application, the engines will use upgraded control electronics and will operate at 109% of rated thrust, slightly higher than the performance in the shuttle application. SLS, however, is an expendable system, and when leftover engines are gone, they're gone, and as a result, NASA contracted with Rocketdyne in 2015 to restart RS-25 production using upgraded manufacturing techniques. New build engines use additive manufacturing, advanced inspection procedures, and of course, machined parts are built with modern CNC equipment. A major design change to the engine nozzle jacket reduced a part count from 37 components to four large metal cones, a change which reduced the cost of the nozzle assembly alone by 20%. NASA has contracted for 18 additional engines which will operate at 111% of original thrust levels and are 30% less expensive to build than the baseline shuttle engines. An SLS engine first stage cluster has already been test fired for a full eight minutes, generating 1.6 million pounds of thrust. Nothing this powerful has been seen since the last Saturn V was launched carrying Skylab to low Earth orbit in 1973. The next step is a test flight of the space launch system to the moon. Additive manufacturing, while well, it's long been a fast and effective prototyping technology, and it's starting to show up in high visibility applications in critical uses, especially in aerospace. Safran Landing Systems and SLM Solutions have produced the additive equivalent of a rough forging of a business jet nose landing gear strut, a tough and safety critical application. The process for the test was selective laser melting, a form of powder bed fusion that uses laser beams to locally melt metal powders to build three-dimensional structures layer by layer. Very large high aspect ratio parts will have traditionally been limited by the working envelope of existing equipment, but for this experiment, run on an SLM 800 machine, a part measuring 80 centimeters high by 45 centimeters deep and 30 centimeters wide was produced in titanium. Safran has patented the design of the part, which they claim is 15% lighter than a similar forging. It's an interesting application since forging alters a metal's grain structure and improves strength, while additive manufacturing is roughly equivalent to casting in multiple layers. 
the ability to build parts with complex internal structures, it gives the additive part designer an extra tool to compensate for the absence of strength enhancement from forging. A 15% weight reduction in any aerospace part is a major achievement, and landing gear assemblies are some of the heaviest components in jet aircraft, so the future looks bright for large format additive in aerospace structural components. Well, that's it for today's episode of This Week in Engineering, brought to you by engineering.com. If you like this show, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell for our next episode. For deeper engineering content, visit engineering.tv for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future and Designing the Future, not found on our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. <laughs>